Hello, in this set of uh, slides and videos, I'll walk you through what the human microbiota is. And basically, it's the microorganisms that live on us and in us, um, and it's incredibly complex. And I just want you to see the basic outline of it. And um, there's a relatively short vocabulary list for this lecture, but I, I want to show you things such as the um, the effects the microbiota have on us, how we can affect the microbiota, um, which body sites have the most dynamic um, bacterial communities, um, and how we know about the microbiota and how we're going to learn more about it. So let's let's get into it. Um, first, what is it? Well, notice I'm using this word microbiota. Um, this is the best word to use to describe this. This is what researchers use when they are being careful. Um, if you see other words in front of microbiota, you might hear human microbiota, normal microbiota, resident microbiota. Um, normal and resident just mean they stay on us for a long time. They're not transient. So this is tricky because if you take a sample of Say, say you take a stool sample because you want to find out what bacteria are growing in someone's gut and you want to figure out what is their microbiota. You take that sample. How do you know which bacteria in that sample are growing in the gut and which ones are just passing through and are about to disappear? It's not immediately obvious and it's not trivial. So we do make this distinction so that we always know we're talking about the ones that are that are growing there. Even if they're only on our bodies or in our bodies for a month, that could be hundreds of generations for them. And so they're evolving in us um, in a big way. So some other words here, you see microbiome. This ohm here refers to genes. So that's the genes from all the microbes. And that's important because the genes encode enzymes and the enzymes do chemical reactions that we cannot do. Our, our cells cannot do a lot of chemical reactions. So it's really helpful that a lot of the um, microorganisms in our gut have all these extra genes and extra enzymes. So the microbiome refers to the extra, basically extra DNA um, we get from having those bacteria in us. Um, microbiota refers to which species, which types of cells, which cells. And then flora, if you see flora, this is a term you should never use because it means plants. Um, researchers don't use this the only researchers who say flora are the ones who are primarily um, clinicians and do some research also. Um, it's just embarrassing. That is kind of embarrassing because it means plants. Microbiota is what means what people are trying to say. Um, but you will hear a lot of clinicians say it. Clinicians are the ones who say flora. And if you say flora around a clinician, you're going to sound normal, so that's fine. Um, but uh, to my ears as a researcher, I just cannot stand this word. Okay, so you're, out, you're, you're outnumbered by your microbiota. Um, easily outnumbered. So you have in your gut, most, most of your microbiota is in your large intestine. By mass, by number of cells, it's almost all there. Um, and you have something like 10 to the 14th bacterial cells in your large intestine, but you only have 10 to the 13th cells in your body, like human cells. Um, you also have fungi and some protists in there, but the bacteria are, and the archaea are really what dominate. Um, these, this is cute. I mean, we can bring up these numbers, but the numbers don't matter. The mass of bacteria is much smaller than the, the mass of your body, but the genes they carry and the chemical reactions they can do and the interactions they have with our immune systems, that is huge. And that has an effect on us. So also I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry. Um, there are definitely viruses in there. There are bacteriophage trying to eat the bacteria. There are, um, antifungal viruses, anti-archaeal viruses. Remember, every cell in the world has roughly 10 virions trying to get it. 
So virions outnumber cells 10 to 1 on Earth, and it's no exception in the gut. Um, so I keep talking about the gut, but also really we should think about the microbiota as on every external surface. Every epithelial surface has a microbiota. So your skin, um, your well, skin in many different parts of the body that are all a little bit different, um, your nose has a microbiota, your mouth has a microbiota, your entire, um, really your entire alimentary canal has a microbiota. Um, the human vagina has a dynamic microbiota that we'll talk about too. So the biggest, um, the biggest areas of research into the microbiota are the gut and the, the vaginal microbiota. If you find bacteria or any other microorganism in muscle or on the deep side or the basal side of an epithelium, something is wrong. That's not normal. The microbiota don't go there. They don't cross our epithelial barriers. So um, if we see bacteria crossing epithelial barriers, those are not members of the microbiota or there's major dysfunction. Um, I mentioned residents and transients. Um, residents are really controlled by all the things you know that control bacterial growth. And we can understand which microorganisms grow in different parts of the gut based on what nutrients are there and how much oxygen is there. We can understand the microorganisms that grow in the vaginal uh, mucus because of the pH and the nutrients that are there. Um, one distinction we make here that I didn't mention before is that the resident microbiota cannot be eliminated by a sepsis. You can't wash them off and have them be gone. You can't completely remove the human microbiota in the gut by taking antibiotics. There are so many places that they, in, they've hi, they can hide. You pretty much can't get rid of them. Um, the transient ones, you can. Those are what is removed by washing. Those are what's typically removed by antibiotics. So there you have it. Okay, so I think where I want to leave this first video is why are we learning so much about the microbiota? Why is it such a hot area of research and why um, hasn't it all been figured out? The thing is, it's, it's complex to a ridiculous degree. There are up to a thousand species of bacteria in a single person's gut. And most of the studies that identify which microbes are, are, are where, they don't look at the species level. They look at the level of families and genera, and sometimes phyla. Um, remember, phyla is a really big group. Um, your phylum is chordata. All the vertebrates are in a phylum. And as we go down, we get more and more specific, and we get all the way to strains, which are smaller groups within species. Um, and strains can have unique effects on people. Individual strains of certain species co-adapt with individual people. They, they co-evolve with individual people. Um, and if you swap strains with someone else, you could, that could be a disease you get. Um, that's well established for the pharyngeal microbiota. Some people have bacteria in their pharynx that don't cause disease, but if they give it to someone else, the other person will get bacterial pharyngitis. Um, and the only difference between them is a few genes or even mutations in one gene. And we cannot identify strains when we do a survey of what microorganisms are in someone's gut. We cannot get to that level unless we're looking for one specific strain. And so that really slows down our understanding of the microbiota. Um, also, we don't fully understand our own immune systems. The immune system is, well, it's one of the very complex systems in a human, and it's hard to understand, and it is uh, very, very complex, and the microbiota interacts with it. All of those 1,000 species is interacting with the immune system. And our immune system, as you know, has a big effect on you. If you've ever gotten a cold, every single thing you experience during that cold is your immune system. Um, the same with COVID or influenza, or really any 
um, disease you get. Almost everything you experience is just your immune system and our microbiota interact with them. Here are a few slides about um, kind of broadly where do we find the microbiota um, and how the microbiota develop in a new human um, and also a little bit more about how sometimes members of our microbiota can cause disease if something goes wrong. And those slides you can read if you're curious or skip. And that um, is the end of that video. It's longer than I wanted it to be, but it's, it's important basic stuff.